We're here with quarterback Mac Jones, and we will open it up with questions. AP Stedham with the first one. Hey, good afternoon, Mac. Hey, how's uh, it going? Oh, good, Mac. Very well, thank you. Say, so, Mac, what have you seen from this Notre Dame secondary, and specifically their cornerbacks, how they try to take care of an elite receiver like somebody like Devontae? Yeah, I think they do a good job. You know, Coach Lee, you know, with their scheme, uh, four down fronts mostly, and then they try and play quarters on the back end and do a bunch of different things too. But I think the, the big thing is that those guys in the back end, they know where their uh, weaknesses are, and then they also are always in the right spot. So uh, when you play a defense like that, you got to understand that they know where they're supposed to be, um, and you just have to find the right holes in the defense. Um, and obviously, they're really well coached, and they play really hard, you know, whenever someone's getting tackled. There's nine, 10, 11 guys around the ball. So, I mean, it just shows that they play together and they play really hard and they're one of the top defenses in the country. Raya Turner with the next question. Hi, Mac. Looking back when you first started at Alabama, you were just a backup quarterback for Jalen Hurts and Tua Tagovailoa. Now fast forward to 2020, you're currently a Heisman candidate. Did you ever think in a million years you'd be in the position you're in right now? Yeah, I mean, I try not to um, worry about future events and things like that, but really just, um, yeah, I did create a bunch of goals for myself uh, and my teammates obviously have a bunch of goals as well. And we kind of come in as a freshman group and we had a great class. Um, and yes, I did learn a lot from Jalen and Tua. Um, and I definitely set goals to try and become a better player so I could help the team. Um, and I just tried to work really hard. And obviously a lot of guys that were in my recruiting class did the same. So I think uh, it's really showing, but at the same time, we have a lot left to write in our story, um, and that's going to be important this next game. Chris Daly, go ahead. Hey, Mac. So you've gone through a lot, uh, flipping from Kentucky to Alabama and then having to sit behind Tua and Jalen, as just mentioned. So mentally, how gratifying is it to play in the Rose Bowl, and how are you preparing mentally for this big game? Yeah, it's definitely a blessing. I mean, any college football player, would want to say they wanted to play in the game like the Rose Bowl in a college football playoff. So we're just really happy to be here. But at the same time, you got to kind of ask yourself if you're satisfied with just being there or do you want to really take advantage of the opportunity? And I think all of our teammates and our coaches have decided that we just want to take advantage of where we're at. And we're finally where we want to be. And like I said, it's just a, it's a great blessing. And uh, we're just looking forward to the opportunity. Brett Hudson, over to you. Yeah, Mac, I was wondering if you could uh, say something about Joe Dixon and the, the role that he's had in this season for you and, and kind of helping you reach this point. Oh, you're talking about Coach D? Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Um, yeah, Coach D is a guy that I've been around for a long time, probably since I was like eight or nine years old. Um, you know, we talk almost every day on the phone or texting, and he's just a guy that, you know, he can always help me out if I need something. Uh, with my mechanics or anything with uh, the, the scheme that we're doing, you know, just because he's been around football for a long time and he's seen a lot of good players and a lot of good coaching. Um, so just really happy to have him there um, kind of just helping me out. But at the same time, we also have great coaches here that have helped me along the way, um, starting with my freshman year all the way to now. So, you know, just getting kind of that third party outside source that I can have as like a family member type person and Coach D has been, been really cool. Peter Sampson, go ahead. Mac, I, I want to ask you about Kyle Hamilton, number 14 on Notre Dame's defense. What kind of matchup uh, problems he can create? And then as a quarterback, how important it is to identify him before every snap and then maybe even like make sure you make eye contact with him to potentially move him around? Yeah, yeah. that guy, I mean, he's all over the tape. I mean, you see him everywhere. He's blitzing. He's in the back end, hiding pressures and then coming or, you know, covering people. So he's a real lengthy guy. I think he's like 6'4". I mean, you can see it on the tape. He understands football. Um, you can tell he's, he, really, he really studies his, his part and he knows exactly what to do. Um, and I'm just looking forward to getting a chance to go against someone like that. I mean, it's almost like an Ed Reed type person where you have to find him every, every play. I mean, you got to know where he is because he can really like ruin a play for you if, if you're not uh, finding that player. Lucas Wees, over to you. Hey, Mac, thanks for taking the time. How much has John Mechie the third grown as a receiver this year? And can you describe what he's like as a teammate off the field? Yeah, Mechie, Mechie's a great guy. 
I mean, he just, he, he wakes up early, he comes to work. I mean, he's just one of those guys that's a grinder, and he's been doing that since he's gotten here. And really this summer, I was just really happy to see him, you know, when we're obviously in different cities, but when we were in Tuscaloosa working together, I mean, he'd wake up at six in the morning and come throw or whenever we wanted to throw. So it just shows that he's grown a lot too. Um, he's kind of got a lot of opportunities this year and he's done a great job and he's a great team player. You know, one of my favorite plays is that that play last uh, last game where he kind of got the fumble back. I mean, that just shows you what type of player and competitor he is. He didn't even get the ball in that play. He ends up flipping a turnover and then we score on the next play. So it's things like that. Sometimes people don't notice and that happens all the time with a lot of players in our team, but I'm really just happy to have John, um, you know, there helping us out and making plays. Mike Rodak, you're up. Yeah, Mac, when you think back to about a year ago and you had a couple of juniors who decided to go to the NFL, but a couple who stayed as well um, with Devonte and, uh, and Najee, just how much were you involved in campaigning to, for them to come back? And what has it meant to have them this season for you? Yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, that's their personal decision. But obviously, you know, when you're becoming a new quarterback in, in, at Alabama, you want to have good playmakers around you. And we have that. But at the same time, those guys came back and kind of put the we before me and they wanted to win a national championship, and we're kind of where we want to be. Um, and at the same time, you know, I'm just really happy that they've kind of increased their um, stock or whatever you want to call it as, as the season's gone on, and they've just proved that you can come back and work for something and be where you want to be. So we got a little bit of ways to go, but um, I'm really proud of those guys, and I'm just super thankful that they actually did come back, and, and I got a chance to play with them for a full year. Nick Hamilton, over to you. Uh, good morning, Matt. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, where have you seen your progression and where have you seen your growth over the course of this season and what have you learned from Coach Sarkeesian as well that has, has helped you along the way? Yeah, I think, you know, just the season's been obviously pretty wild. Um, you know, being the starting quarterback and stuff, there's a lot of pressures and things like that. But at the same time, you got to learn how to manage it and uh, just be a good teammate and then try and be the best quarterback that you can be. And, you know, each week there's a different challenge. So you just have to first like understand what the challenge is and then figure out how you can can beat that challenge um, and obviously coach Sark uh, you can see it on the field he calls great plays um, he's great at developing players um, he, all the players love him I mean we all we all are behind coach Sark 100 percent and he's an aggressive play caller and it shows on the field and we just we love how he adjusts um, to what we're saying and telling him too some offensive coordinators probably don't listen to their players as much but he definitely takes in what we tell him and what we see on the field and then we kind of combine to come up with the game plan and, and even in-game adjustments. John Feinran, you're up. Yeah, Mac, I wonder if you could uh, dissect some other Notre Dame uh, defensive players, uh, Wusa Koromora and some of the other players that they uh, that you've seen on film. Yeah, Jeremiah, number six, does a great job. I mean, the guy, you know, obviously won the Buckus Award, and um, you see him on film. He can cover people. He's all over the field. I mean, he creates turnovers. Um, causes fumbles, interceptions, all sorts of things. Um, but I think he's kind of like the, you know, the pivotal piece in the defense. But at the same time, they got great players all around. Uh, they create a lot of movement up front in the defensive line, play a lot of different guys. Linebackers are, you know, bigger run stopper type guys. But at the same time, they're all over the field as well. And in the back end with the four guys in the back end, we already talked about 14. Um, and, you know, he's kind of the leader back there. But all those guys have played a lot of football. It's nine seniors or something like that. So we just got to be ready. Um, you know, they're the top defense in the country and obviously really good on third down too. So we're just looking forward uh, to the opportunity. We have time for just a few more questions for Mac. Aaron Suttles, you're up. Mac, going back to your recruitment in, in that class of 2017, obviously it's easy to look back now. There's so many guys in the NFL from that class are going to be even more going into the NFL, as you're going through your recruitment, you're meeting the guys, or even when you get to campus, what was the first moment you realized that that class was special? Yeah, I mean, I knew they were they were all special even before we got here at camps and stuff. I mean, all those guys, Smitty Ruggs, Judy, throwing to them at some camps, really cool opportunity. And obviously, you know, you can look at that class and be like, wow, right now there's a few guys in the NFL, a few guys that will be in the NFL probably next year. Um, and it's just really cool to be a part of that class. Kind of the, I was kind of the second quarterback. And obviously, like we talked about earlier, I learned from Tua and I've also learned from everybody from that class. So. It's been really cool to be a part of that that growth. Dennis Dodd, go ahead. 
Hey, Mac, um, I wonder if you could give us an idea of what you fa the offense has faced defensively. What lengths or, or defenses go to try and stop you guys? Just maybe the number of defenses you've seen um, as defenses try to catch up. Yeah, early in the year, I think people would try to play us how they wanted to play their defense against us. And then you kind of saw the transition as the year went on. Some people will drop eight, some people played more coverage, you know, and then some people will try and pressure, but we kind of had answers for a little bit of everything. And it really just goes back to going against Coach Saban's um, defense and his philosophy. He's very multiple um, in his scheme and um, Coach Pete and all them. So they, they do a good job in practice, giving us different looks. But yeah, it definitely changed as, as time went on. And I mean, there was one game when the team literally dropped eight the whole time and you just got to take what they give you. Um, it kind of is what it is. And uh, it's good to go against different type of defenses like that because you get good learning experiences on tape and obviously when you're out there on the field. Final question for Mac will be from Tyler Martin. Hey, Mac, I know losing Landon was huge in the Florida game, but just speak to the level of your confidence with Chris Owens and what have you seen from him in practice the last few days? Yeah, I mean, losing Landon is definitely a tough, tough gig, but we got to kind of just bounce back and Landon would want nothing more than us to just keep doing what we're doing. And that starts with Chris. I mean, Chris has been here for, you know, many years and uh, he's also one of my close buddies that, you know, he does a good job. He's played tackle, guard, center. I mean, we've been, we go way back years and years. So we kind of have that same communication level and we've been working on it this week. And I've just been really proud of him and the opportunity that he's gotten. I mean, that's a great experience just to be able to say, hey, I'm starting in the college football playoff game. And I've been here for a while. So we kind of have that same similar late bloom, um, you know? So I'm just really excited for Chris and we're on the same page and we're ready to roll.